the stars in heaven resound with God's praises. Nighttime in Jerusalem, the holy city slumbers. Vahogisa boy Yomam Valoilo. At Yeshiva's Shuvabonim in the old city of Jerusalem, the Talmudim study God's holy Torah day and night, around the clock. As the dawn slowly breaks, the lights still shine at the Shuvabonim Besa Medrash and upon Mount Moria, the Temple Mount. Shachar's prayers. At Shuvubonim, they govern the Sikkim. At the first ray of light, they begin praying. And as the sun rises over the Holy of Holies, they recite the Shmon Restore our judges as of old. Yerushalayim irecho barachamim toshu. O return in mercy to thy city, Jerusalem. Rabbi Eliezer Berlin, the Rosh Yeshiva, established Shuvu Bonim in 5737, 1977, in Bnei Brak. Five years later, he and his Talmidim moved to the old city of Jerusalem, to a Jewish-owned building destroyed by the Arabs. Rabbi Berlin and his students renovated the site and erected a roof. Here, facing the Temple Mount, they built a sanctuary in miniature, a center for prayers, Torah study, and serving Hashem. Who are the Talmudim of Yeshiva Shuvu Bonim? They are young Jews from all social strata in Israel and the diaspora, ranging over the entire educational and professional spectrum. Scientists, attorneys, pilots, army officers, musicians, and motion picture professionals, all in search of the true meaning of life. Their uniquely Jewish way of life is characterized by devotion, joy, prayer, study, a sense of justice, and a love of one's fellow man, a love of Israel, a love of all Jews. Yalon Yitzchaki, a talented and promising musician and a superb athlete, was born and raised on a non-religious leftist kibbutz. <laughs> Judaism is everything for me today. It's a truly sublime existence to be here at the yeshiva in the holy city of Jerusalem, to study Torah, to keep the mitzvahs. I feel that I'm reaching genuine self-fulfillment. Jonathan Montlake was born in England to an assimilated Jewish family. His father is an attorney. When they put their coming to the yeshiva, my father said to me, what, you want to be a Jew? You know, I mean, that's, that's how far away we were. It was, uh, it was, it was much worse. But, um, he's not a shame. You know, he's got a little go well, and uh, they, they've been very, very supportive. And, uh, you know, we, have a very good, we had a very good relation beforehand, and nothing's changed. You know, it's just me doing something else. Just over a century ago, there was a vibrant Jewish life in the old city of Jerusalem. Thousands of Jews lived in the houses adjoining Yeshiva's Shubobonim. Great scholars like Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld and the brisker Rav Maharil Diskin lived and studied here. The center of Jewish life was Yeshiva's Chaye Olam, where Jews, young and old, studied Torah day and night. The entire Jewish world looked up to Chaye Olam. Talmidim came here from all over Eretz Yisrael. 1929, the Arab riots. Jews are murdered and robbed, and the Jewish community begins to dwindle. 1936, another three years of rioting begins, and we, the Jews, are slaughtered and cast out. The area was deserted. The Besamedrish of Yeshiva's Chaye Oilam, which overlooks the site of God's own sanctuary, was left abandoned and unfinished. The Arabs take over the nearby homes, and the area becomes known as the Muslim Quarter. After the Six-Day War and the rehabilitation of the Jewish Quarter, the Jewish homes remain in ruins here, only a two-minute walk from the Kaisel Hamarobi. The mezuzah grooves are still evident in their entranceways. Jewish property was abandoned. 
and the deserted Yeshiva's Chaye Olam was devastated. 1983, Rabbi Berlin and his Talmidim come here to restore the Yeshiva building. Shuvu Bonim, return, O my children, Jerusalem called to them. And they did return. Good neighborly relations prevail with the Arab neighbors living nearby. Yeshiva students reinforce Jewish presence in the old city of Jerusalem. The women walk freely through all the streets and alleys, bringing along their children, in spite of Arab rioting. The women are a major force in maintaining the Shuvu Bonim community. They are active in education and public relations, and aid considerably in community development. Ayelet Aran, wife of Tzafrir, a Balas Tshuva, daughter of a non-observant family. Materially speaking, our women live very modestly, but were more than amply compensated by a satisfying spiritual experience and a full, complete, and blissful family life. Safrir Aran was born in Haifa. His father, a major general in the Israel Defense Forces. His mother, a physician. A model secular Israeli family, far removed from Yiddishkeit. Safrir, a pensive, serious young man, sought the truth of the world. He experimented with Buddhism, Rudolf Steiner, meditation, until he discovered Judaism. For me, it was almost like discovering Mars, especially because I came from red socialist Haifa. My encounter with Torah and with Rabbi Berland affected me deeply. My friends who joined me in seeking the way were similarly impressed. That's why we decided to establish the yeshiva. The yeshiva was established in Bnei Brak, and then moved to Jerusalem. Here, in the partially renovated Haye Olam building, the sounds of Torah reverberate once again. Torah study continues through the night. There are no breaks. Talmidim study for long hours. They penetrate deeply into the Torah world, its secrets and mysteries. They have abandoned the so-called good life of the outside world. Suri Getter, an Israel Air Force pilot and a motion picture professional, has sailed around the world in his yacht. When you're flying, you feel like you're nothing. You're among the clouds and you're nothing at all. You sense such emptiness. You know that in one split second you could crash. The purpose of life is not jet planes, yachts, or anything material. Not trips around the world, and not money. My encounter with the yeshiva, and with the wisdom of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, showed me that this is precisely what I'm looking for. And so I've been at the yeshiva for eight years. I married a special girl, a balas tshuva as well. And we have, Baruch Hashem, three children. Micha Zana was born in Eilat, the famous vacation site on the shores of the Red Sea. Youth, discotheques, speedboats. But he's had his fill of emptiness. He begins searching for the truth. He comes to Shuvu Bonim and asks one of the Talmidim, what made you come here to this particular place? And then he brought me up to the roof, showed me the Temple Mount and said to me, until we rebuild the temple, the churches and mosques surrounding it will continue to flourish. It was a powerful shock. I realized that this was the place for me. Since then, I've been here. I married a young artist, also a Balas Tshuva. We have three children, thank God, who are growing up happy. They're growing up Jewish, with Torah and prayer, with Jewish education. At Shuvu Bonim, so close to Har Abayas, the words and concepts of Judaism become tangible. Here of Romavinu stood ready to sacrifice his son Yitzchok on the altar. Here Shlomo HaMelech stood as he dedicated the first temple. Here the Kohen Gadol offered the Korbanos on Yom Kippur, and you can see the holy site right before your very eyes. 
Here the Levim sang God's praises. The Shechina has never left this spot. From the Shuvubanim building, you can see all of Jerusalem before you. What could be more fulfilling than studying Torah, serving Hashem, and proceeding to the Koisel Ma'arovi to pour out your heart before the Creator of all? Aviram Damti was an all-star soccer player on Israel's national team. Here I feel complete within the path of Judaism because the truth has only one response. Two plus two equals four, not 3.8 or 3.9. At Shuvubanim we go for the whole truth. And if you can't make it today, you'll make it tomorrow. Daniel Blot, born in Sydney, Australia, his three brothers are married to non-Jews. His father, a well-known physicist and Nobel Prize candidate, was very proud of his son, who had graduated university in Australia and was an accomplished musician. If, if my uh, grandfather's grandfather in Russia was a Rosh Hashiv, if he would believe that his son would come, could come every day to the, to, the, to the Western Wall to pray, it would, he wouldn't have believed it. He would have, it would have, would have, absolutely unimaginable, unbelievable. And how do you see that? And to, to, learn, to learn Torah in this place, to learn... I never dreamed that I'd ever be in Israel. And to be in the holiest... To be right next to the Temple Mount, it's just not... It wasn't on my map. It wasn't, uh, wasn't imaginable at all. <laughs> Are Shuvubonim's Talmidim alienated from the world, from productive activity, from society at large? Most Shuvubonim students devote several hours a day to supporting their families, the yeshiva also offers a course for scribes, whose graduates earn their living by writing mezuzahs, tefillin, and sifrei Torah. Some Talmidim have dedicated their lives to bettering Israeli society. There are yeshiva students who have made their homes in the distressed Musrara neighborhood, where they established a Torah study center. This project fulfills the Shuvubanim credo, which aspires towards bringing Jews closer to their father in heaven. Young people on the fringes of society, ex-convicts, gamblers, and idlers, come here daily and display remarkable dedication. Here they study Torah and learn the ways of Judaism. They've abandoned the cards, gambling, and flirtation with crime. They're now on the right path. Every evening they get together with their mentor, Michael Gol, a Shuvubanim student. Michael never made any demands. You want to come here? Okay. You don't? Fine. You want to speak? Speak. You don't? All right. He doesn't stand on top of you. He won't get angry if you don't get things right. He'll smile and explain. He explains the Torah to us with the commentary of Rabbi Nachman, the one they call the Breslover Rebbe, just like he was having an ordinary conversation with us. He knows how to teach us this stuff, because he's Michael. He's a perfect example of what Rabbi Nachman would want. I feel this is the goal of every Jew, to devote himself to all other Jews, to demand the maximum of himself and nothing from anyone else. This I learned from my Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Berlin. If you're easygoing and make no demands, people will listen to you. I want to be a complete Jew. What I demand of myself Will bring the Jewish people closer to Judaism. And he will return the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Shuvu Bonim Talmidim maintain good relations with their old friends and their parents, most of whom welcome their children's choice of lifestyle. Michael Gol at the home of his parents in Tel Aviv. They recall how Mikhail and his brothers sought a way of life which brought them to Guru Maharaji. This brings tears to their parents' eyes. But Mikhail's success at Shuvu Bonim, his rabbinic work, and the scope and intensity of his faith in Hashem now gladdens their hearts. His loving family and influence on others are also a source of happiness. Rechavam Ze'evi, nicknamed Gandhi, is among Israel's greatest warriors, a retired general and currently a Knesset member. His son, Binyamin Ze'evi, was himself an IDF officer, and today is one of Shuvu Bonim's most outstanding Talmidim. 
Do Knesset member Zaevi and his wife feel that they've lost a son? I had a son and I still have one. The path that he chose is not alien to me. It was the way of my father and my grandfather. He remains a loyal son of the Jewish people. He and his family are happy. And as long as he's happy, his mother and I are happy as well. I am so impressed by my grandchildren's education. They learn to live simply and modestly. When I come to them, I dress accordingly, of course. They're happy. They love their grandmother. And when they're happy, I'm happy too. From the outset, when I began to return to Judaism and perform mitzvahs, my family made me feel comfortable. They haven't yet chosen the same path that I have, but they believe that I'm doing something legitimate and positive. After I got married and raised a family, we became even closer. At Shuvu Bonim, Jewish happiness is a mitzvah. The Torah makes us all happy, from the Rosh Yeshiva Rabbi Berlin to the youngest children. Members of the Shuvu Bonim band begin to play Shilgi on violin, Yalon on guitar, Safrir on flute, and Danny Zahavi on organ. As Moshe Revach sings, the Simchas Beis Shuevu at Shuvu Bonim attracts scores of guests every night of Cholamoid Sukkot. The renowned Rabbi Yitzhak David Grossman of Migdala Emek joins Rabbi Berlin and the Shuvu Bonim Talmudim. At Shuvu Bonim, the Talmudim find the light of Torah, enhanced by the interpretations of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, full of joy, faith, hope, and trust. There's a sign over the entrance reading, There is no despair in the world. Jews, take heart for every Jew. There is hope for the best. This hope and happiness has brought about a revolution among the hundreds of students. The Rosh Yeshiva himself is an outstanding example of devotion to Hashem and to his Talmudim. He has changed their lives and molded them into people dedicated to Jews and Judaism, to Jerusalem and to their fellow man. When I come to Jerusalem and visit Shuvu Bonim, I say that everyone is obligated to help this sacred yeshiva. I am certain that thanks to the merit of their noble endeavors, they will witness the rebuilding of the holy city. Once, when I was on the kibbutz, I read this book. And there was a dialogue there between a mother and her son. He asks her, what's a Jew? And she says, when you walk on the street and see a person with a beaming face and shining eyes, you will know that that is a Jew. So even as a child on the kibbutz, I was looking for this face. I discovered it on the rabbi. The righteous rabbi Eliezer Berland, the head and leader of the Shuvu Banim congregation, who follows the teachings of the Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlav, a Jew whose whole life is Torah and holiness and the fear of God, a man who has devoted his life to the people of Israel. Breslav. Breslav means feeling and loving every Jew. To love him truly, Breslav is the unity of the nation. They sang of the Torah that comes forth from Jerusalem, in the crematoria, in the gas chambers. In the chambers where 2,000 Jews were killed every day, they were singing this song, The Torah Comes Out of Zion, from Halakha to Action. 
Rabbi Berlin sends his disciples, all great Talmudic scholars who dedicate their lives to constant studying of the Torah, to all corners of the world to spread the word of God. People are seeking. They ask us, why didn't you come 20 years ago? Then we wouldn't be secular. The students of the yeshiva keep in touch with all the members of Shuhubanim. They also pray for their sake at the tombs of our forefathers and at the Western Wall, and pray for the souls of their loved ones and for a decent livelihood, good health, or any other request. The congregation of Shuhubanim is the biggest and oldest congregation of Baalei Tshuva, Jews from all countries and ethnic origins. What is common to all the disciples of Rabbi Berlin is the wisdom of Rabbi Nachman, to do and study everything with joy and with all your soul for the sake of worshiping God. And what about prayer? One should pray with a melody, a nigun, as one would add beautiful colors to a painting in order to evoke delight in all who see it, so that every word in the prayer will capture you, enfold you, kiss you, and ask of you, utter me slowly, with enthusiasm, with melodies, with song, just as the Rebbe says. The students study non-stop, day and night. Tens of students received their rabbinical sifa degree from the greatest rabbis of the generation. This is already the third generation of the Shuhubanim congregation receiving its education from the best educators. And the rabbi still accompanies the children every step of the way. He studies with them and gets much nachas. In this congregation, we have hundreds of children in the Talmud Torah, hundreds in the yeshiva for little ones, and in the yeshiva for youth. We have a kolel of about a hundred students who are sons of Baalei Tshuva, hundreds of young men, hundreds of children, even thousands. The rabbi knows each of them, prays for each of them, loves each of them. The efforts of the rabbi to bring Israel closer to our Father in Heaven are blessed by Rabbi Ovadia Yosef. Welcome, he who brings merit to many others, he who prevents people from sinning, his destiny is blessed. And it will come forth that the leaders of the nation will gather together all the tribes of Israel as one. The people of Israel will repent and do tshuva, the first sign of the coming of the Mashiach. In the old city of Jerusalem, facing the Temple Mount, only a few steps from the western wall in the heart of an Arab neighborhood, stands the central yeshiva of Shuhubanim. Risking their lives, the disciples of Rabbi Berlin have stuck with this holy place. An officer in the Israeli army, Benny Zevi, son of Knesset member Rahavam Zevi. Sometimes I feel as though I were on the front line, surrounded by Arabs. Their being there, facing the Temple Mount and the Holy of Holies, constitutes a critical Israeli stronghold. If they weren't there, the Arabs would have been there. Everyone was afraid to live here. It is not in the Jewish area. We were the first to go and live there. Fourteen knife wounds took away the life of yeshiva student Eliyahu Amedi, whom Arabs attacked on his way to the yeshiva. The pain was great, and also the anger. We killed no one, but there was an outburst of anger. Jerusalem has been the Jewish capital, the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. And it was non-stop Jewish existence in Jerusalem. And that should be remembered. Rabbi Berland and his students remember and carry on. A complex of 2,500 square meters was built in this area, the largest Jewish construction site in the Muslim quarter. When it is completed, the building will hold a huge Beit Midrash for 1,500 worshippers, 15 study rooms, rooms for lectures, and a dormitory, and also a state-of-the-art kitchen and a dining room. There is a battle that is being waged today over the future of Jerusalem. It's no secret that uh, there's an attempt to dislodge us, first from the uh, ancient city, the old city, and then from the other parts of the city. Uh, that battle requires an enormous application of will, of national will. We uh, are blessed with uh, a people that has shown remarkable reserves of national will, of spirit, of belief in our ancient faith, and in our common future. That spirit is represented by Yeshiva Chuhubanim. It is placed in the heart of the old city. Uh, the people who are there work and thrive and study in the very places where the uh, prophets, King David, and the rest of the kings and sages of Israel 
walked and forged the life of the Jewish people. Uh, but they are doing so today in the 21st century. They need all the help they can get. Because if they are there, then other Jews will be there too. And in fact, are there. If they are there, then we can all be sure that our hold in Jerusalem, our efforts to ensure that this is a sovereign united city under Israel, will never be challenged. I believe that uh, the spirit represented by Rabbi Berland and his students, the spirit of Yeshiva Tshuhu Banim, is a spirit that makes the difference for our future, for our life, and for Jerusalem. This is a Yeshiva that deserves every effort and every support on your part, and I hope you'll give it. Shuvu Bonin, return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord. Next year in Jerusalem.